So two months ago, I made a series of tutorials on how I usually color comic book pages, pinups, and character concepts all at once. If you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll suggest you go up here and watch all those videos before coming back to this one because this one is a little bit more advanced but I use the same similar techniques. In today's video, I'm going to show you my approach that I use to color these amazing line arts from the one and only... This guy, I look at him as my, my father. He's my one and only... Lenil Yu. So he sent me these amazing inks and I'm going to show you the process I used to take them from this to this. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you exactly how I do this. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so now while I drink this protein. Okay, now I believe you subscribed to my channel, so let's proceed to the video. Alright, so we're in Photoshop now and as soon as I saw this image, I knew I wanted to have kind of a blue mood in the image. So first of all, I just changed the background and did a small gradient of blue from below. Then I started filling the characters out with just gray. So I selected each character individually and I filled him, I filled the character with gray on a different layer. So each character has a different layer is on a different layer and it's filled with a neutral gray color and i'm using this gray color as a color hold so i'm going to do all the flats and do them inside the gray color hold right now i just made like a gradient on the background and kind of made it feel like there's a long light glowing behind them because they're heroes so I'm going to, I'm making this feel like a really powerful hero moment or hero shot. So I've come back to Batman now and I'm rendering the forms on his cape and I'm just using the lasso tool and selecting where light is hitting. But right now I'm just using the ambient light. So I'm selecting areas where the ambient light is hitting. Then I'm just gradually brushing them in and bringing out the forms. A little bit then i'll now select a lighter color and then use that to brush it in and just follow the shapes of the muscles that lenny has already drawn because he's a really good draftsman so he's already giving me all the information i need to bring out the structure bring out the forms of each of the different characters so right now i'm just using pretty much the same technique just to bring out all the forms in his face and I have said this before but if you really want to understand how to render your forms and make the shapes and selections you make for your characters look very convincing and look real you should just study references like do a lot of studies of just human faces and do some studies from movies while well, emphasize movies because they already light movies exactly how you want to light your comic book exactly how you want to light your drawings and images because you're trying to you're trying to make you're trying to create three-dimensional light sources for your images and definitely they use this same three-dimensional sources in movies or at least they use two so they'll use like a key light and then they'll use a fill light just to put in some more detail in the background so i'll suggest you do studies from movies just to understand how you know light brings out the forms and how the all different forms interact with themselves and also you have to understand the material you're you're rendering that is very important too as you can see how i'm making some part of his cloth i'm making it lighter i'm making it more reflective than his skin or his cape or his gauntlet because i know that material is it's kind of it has like a synthetic feel to it so it's going to reflect a little bit more than a thick cape 
and if you have problems figuring out what materials are reflective i'll suggest you just do a google search of the different materials you want to use and then just kind of look at how they're reacting to light and how light is hitting them and then you just use the same principle will be the same principle when you're painting these or rendering these materials in your work so right now for superman i'm going to have a strong rim light hitting him from the top and it's going to be blue so that it will further push him out and push kind of superman batman and wonder woman it will bring them out forward so you have there'll be a lot of focus on the three of them first before all the other people in the image so right now i'm just selecting the blue and i'm doing it on a normal layer but i've clipped that layer using the alt key i've clipped it into the gray color hold of superman so i used just a regular blue and then i'm using a lighter version of that blue for like the catch highlights and i really enjoyed doing this for using this technique for painting rim lights it just makes the character or the form you're rendering it just makes it look more round more three-dimensional because when you when you use a three light setup you're pretty much bringing out the detail from the main light source where it's hitting it and then you're still bringing in some detail from kind of behind where the shadows will be so there will be shadows and then you put your rim light right there you put your edge light right there in the shadows because it's kind of coming in from behind so it just helps solidify the forms and just make everything look more three-dimensional <clears throat> so right now i'm painting superman's face and i'm using a little bit more desaturated oranges if you saw it before when i was painting his face it was a little bit too saturated so i had to just desaturate it a little bit so later on i'll now bring in the saturation depending on what areas of his skin i want to emphasize and make more saturated so definitely i'm going to make like his nose area and a little bit of under his eyes i'm going to push those towards the reds because that's where blood will show through especially for a person that has light skin a white person a white um, a light skinned person that's where you're going to see the most blood and also the knuckles of their fingers so you can just do a little bit of studies on kind of skin tones and just see how each different skin tone react all these things are just basically up to observation if you're really conversant with how light and human anatomy work if you're doing your observations and doing studies you just understand these things so definitely you should be doing those even though you're not like doing studies every day to improve just build a habit of observing and understanding how things are working instead of just like looking at art figure out ask yourself questions like why is this this color or why is that that, that color or why is the light coming in from below and then you try and ask those questions yourself and then figure a way to answer them if you can't you can maybe if you're in a group just ask your friends or something it's just a good way to consciously be studying without have actually having to do studies all the time so right now what i'm doing is i'm painting in the subsurface scattering on his cape so if the light is really hitting the cape from the top and it's really bright it's going to go in through the material and then spread within it you always see this happen with ears and fingers when there's a bright light source behind the fingers or behind your ears you see that the ear has this kind of a reddish orange glow it just becomes red it's the blood that's within it 
because the light source is really strong it's just spreading underneath the skin so that's kind of the effect i did with his cape here and then i'm now kind of painting in the red the bounce light that was spilled from his cape into his costume but i'm just going to do it just going to make it a little bit subtle so it's not like too it's not too much so i mean definitely for everyone i will advise you to just do studies all the time i mean even if you're really busy and cannot do physical studies just build that habit of just asking yourself those questions conscious studies they help a lot i do that all the time when i'm watching movies or when i'm just hanging out with friends or taking photos and whatever i do this all the time because i've seen that that it was that is what helps me to understand how light works and just figure out a way to you know nail rendering forms easily and faster when i was starting out i actually did a ton of studies of lighting and anytime i had to create an image i would actually light myself so then i'll just paint busts and then i'll light myself and take a picture using my phone and then replicate the exact lighting that i had going on in the image i'll just use that same lighting on the image i was doing so it was kind of like using references but i was using my own photos as the as the reference so i'll suggest you can do something like that too where you're just taking you're taking photos of yourself and then you're using those as your reference so take for instance you want to study you want to study the face yeah so you take photos of your face in different in different positions and from different angles and then you use the exact lighting and that after drawing it on your computer or however else you want to draw it you use the exact lighting on your face in the photo you took if if there's no much light in there you can actually light your face so you can get different colored bulbs or you can also get a torch and then just light yourself try out different lighting techniques try out under lighting try out three-quarter lighting try out a butterfly light just try out different uh kinds of lighting and then use that exact lighting setup you had in your photo use that exact same setup for your studies study that try and see if you can nail it the first time if you can't you do it again just keep doing it until you understand it then after doing the studies you can turn the next page or open a new layer in photoshop and then try and see if you can replicate that same study without having to look at your reference so right now i'm just bringing out the gold in her in wonder woman's um armor and after painting it i see that it's not sh as shiny as i want it to be so i just kind of use an overlay layer or a soft light layer to just emphasize the yellows and the oranges in the gold and then i just go into the brightest parts and then i just make a little bit of scratches to show you that the it's kind of worn it's not just i mean bare new armor so you can just that's a is a good thing to do with armor especially when there's like the focal point on you just go to the brightest part and then you just make scratches and then you take those scratches and then you just pull them away so you scratch away from the light source so it's just it's 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 a good thing to do for when you're rendering like when you're rendering metal so as at this point in the image i have seen i've already established the mood and the lights 
and the colors i want to use for the entire image so right now it's just pretty much rendering all the characters one by one and then after i do that i'm not going to just bring all the characters together and kind of tie in the entire image with like some environmental lights then i i want to really make the focus to be on the first three characters so the other characters in the background they'll still be in focus but once you look at the image you're drawn immediately to the first three characters which is superman and batman and wonder woman so i'm going to rely on uh using um atmospheric lights to do that right now so i just created a new layer i put it on screen and then i'm just using a little bit of blues just to separate them and just create some distance between the characters you can see now as i just did it right now you can see that batman is just popping and he's looking a little bit closer to us so now i'm going to do that for the first three characters too so they look like they're a little bit closer to us and then i will now that will push the ones behind back it's just like just using your atmospheric perspective just to show you how to, show, to create distance between each character and to like make push bring some characters into focus thank you so much for making it this far if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like and give me drop comments down below let me know what you think about this process you can tell me your own process on how you color comic book pages and pinups or any other art you make just let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section and also videos you want to see from me in future also don't forget to share the video with a friend and subscribe to my channel if you reach this point and you still have not please please do so do so yeah it's, it's not going to cost you anything just just um just break this Sub subscribe subs just subscribe to my channel yeah thank you thank you very much with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.